Okay, so this is going to be a playthrough of the Ars Nova controversy. Uh, so I've done it slightly different. Uh, we've got the uh, the camera set up uh, with a static camera this time. I have an overview of the board, uh, and then I'll bring things up towards uh, the board uh, when we want to see certain things. Um, the only problem is the lighting, uh, but we'll soon see how it goes. So, um, first things first, uh, I'm going to be playing this solo, which means you actually take control of all three of the characters. Okay, uh, you can you can play it with uh, up to three people uh, playing this one scenario, and each person takes on one of the um, one of the monks. You got the Franciscan, uh, the novice one, and novice two. Uh, we're going to have the starting things first, so I'm going to set those up first. So it's one intrigue, one legend, a re-roll token, one order, normal command activation, and a first player. Now we've got all of the uh, the monks on the board set up as denoted in the setup page, so that is all set up. We've got Philip de Vitry here, who basically, we're try he's been poisoned, and we've got to make sure we keep him alive. Ideally, we need to save him, and that's one of our objectives to win the game. So we need to save uh, Philip de Vitry uh, by doing what's called a healing action. So it's finding the antidote and then applying it. And on the board, we've basically got these tokens which are uh, be, have been randomly placed around the board. Three of them will be the herbs that we need to create the antidote. And then we need to do the challenge, which is gonna be the blue cube on the challenge track uh, to create the antidote, uh, which will be determined by the AI deck, which I'll talk about in a second. So uh, that's the first objective we need to do to win the game. The second thing we need to do to win this particular scenario is we have to open up the crypt before the Inquisitor's arrival in the Abbey. And the last thing we need to do is finding the Ars Nova, uh, Ars Nova parchment tokens hidden in the crypt. So over here, we've got 16 tokens. And I've had to put a, um, there's only three of them are actually the, uh, the uh, Ars Nova parchment tokens. Okay. So there are, 13 skull tokens. One of the par parchment tokens I've put a little sticker on because uh, they made a mistake uh, shipping the game where it didn't have enough uh, skull tokens for a one player game. Okay. And then basically there's a crypt phase. As soon as we open up the crypt, if we're successful in that challenge using this track here, uh, then we go to the crypt phase. Uh, basically nothing else happens in the board. We just literally do that. And then we start flipping up tokens. Uh, throughout the game, I'm going to be looking at tokens, hopefully, uh, to try and eliminate some of these skulls and try and find uh, the parchments. In a one-player game, you need to find two parchments before, uh, and then you win the game. Um, if at any point, when we're in this phase, we draw three skull tokens, we lose the game. It's a tough game. It's a tough scenario. But we'll see how we go. So... We've got uh, Sean Con I mean the transition here, um, who, uh, again, sorry about this, the lightning, the lighting in here is not great, uh, but he is very much like a uh, Sean Connery, and you probably can't see this at all. But uh, we've got him here. So uh, this is uh, Sean, uh, uh, the transition. Novice one has the white base, and novice two, as it's the same kind of model, has a no colored base. Okay, and they start in the orchard over here in AN6. So, how does this work? It follows, like all of the Joan of Arc scenarios, which I really like about this game, is they follow the same kind of rules and all the rest of it, but there are some differences in this. So number one, probably the most important, and to be honest, I make a lot of assumptions because the rules aren't super, super clear. So first of all, all the other monks on the board that you can see, they're going to be moving around, determined by the AI cards, best way to put it. Um, 
when you go to an area, uh, so if I went into this area here, uh, you don't go into the area outside, you literally go into the building, if there's a building there. Uh, there are three th tokens, four tokens, sorry, they're out revealed on the board already. We've got ham, uh, wine, and honey uh, in these three locations. And if we pick those up, it basically, we can, we can use them to move monks uh, effectively around, which can be really useful because if monks are in the area where you're trying to do searches, you've got to roll dice. So it's a 50-50 chance uh, that things happen or you get found and you get caught. Uh, so basically, um, if we uh, pick up either the ham, the honey or the wine, we can spend one intrigue or one legend token to basically move um, move any monk from an adjacent area into an adjacent into an area of their choice. So it doesn't have to be adjacent. So the the one you're targeting has to be adjacent, but you can move them to the other side of the board if you really need to get somewhere um, out of there. This item here, the crossbow, crossbow, the crowbar is essential. It reduces. It says here reduces the uh, indicated target for each challenge by two you can keep the crowbar after use. So basically it lasts forever. So this is gonna be a priority to go and get this cross, uh, crowbar. It's not as simple as just turning up and you just take it. You have to do a roll, uh, which we'll try and do when we get there. But basically it reduces uh, your, your testing for both the antidote and searching for the crypt by two, massive. Uh, there are other tokens out there, some negative, some positive, which we'll come across as we go along. Okay, so. I'm just going to go straight into the uh, straight into the action. So we're going to start with uh, you draw the card first of all. So first thing is you've got the uh, the target for each of the um, the uh, challenges. So the crypt is 14, the cure is 14. This is actually a really uh, they're really decent numbers to try and do it. Next, you look up here. The inquisitor moves one space on. So there are six spaces. And then he arrives at the Abbey. If he arrives at the Abbey before I found the crypt, I lose the game. Uh, good news is, though, uh, the uh, Philip de Vitry does not succumb to any wounds uh, this time around. It's a zero. Then we've got this. This is where you move monks, okay? And the basic rule is you can move them from any area to these areas, except for the ones you've already moved that round. So, first of all, I'm just going to put this down here so I can actually... Find out what the uh, locations are. This is the, probably the trickiest part of, of this particular scenario. You've got these scenarios. And yeah, sure, the library is an L, but the cloister's an N. The cellar's an H. The prayer room's an N. So it, it, it's understanding those. So these three green areas are outdoor areas. So we're going to start with B, which is the washroom, which is up there. Now, I kind of want to... I'm thinking I might go this way first. So I'm going to move... The, remove the guy from uh, the honey and I'm going to put him in the washroom. So these these are normal monks. You see them, they're hooded. Uh, they're hooded monks. Uh, I like this one. Okay. Uh, actually, what I... You know what? I'm going to get... I'm going to set up another camera just so I can show the uh, in-close gameplay. Okay, so... Um, the monks, the procession monks... Uh, uh, so my procession monks, what am I talking about? The normal monks are these guys here. Okay. What is he is here? Then we've got, uh, then we move along. So then we've got the elder monk, which is probably the, uh, the strongest one. Uh, I can now show you. Sean Connery. And then we've got procession monks, we've got library monks. So there are a few different monks to uh, deal with um, that have that are better than others, effectively. Okay, anyway, so uh, we're carrying on with this. So we've moved uh, into B. Next we move into... Excuse me. We move into C, outdoors, which is the cemetery kind of makes sense with the normal monk so let's put uh, this guy in the cemetery then we go to e which is the quarry unfortunately um i 
Yeah, I'll just keep going. Just keep going that way. And then one down to indoor, the laboratory, which is going back into here. So put one into there. Then the elder monk moves to K. And K is the scripturonium. So really good news. That the uh, And you'll see why in a minute. The elder monk has moved. Spend one activation order. You may look at the next abbey card. You must run rotate the crypt 180 degrees. Hmm. Do I want to do that? And the abbey card, by the way, are the, the one I'm literally just resolving at the moment. I suppose I can I can prepare for next turn. So uh, yeah, let's let's do that. I'm going to spend my activation cube that I got at the start. It's good for the cure. We're not going to get any wounds. Uh, lose two challenge points and rotate the crit. That's fine. So let's make sure we don't do a challenge this turn. Uh, and then we need to be going to the cemetery um, to do the mission. Okay. That's cool. Uh, so our mission for this round is go to the prayer room, which is here, full of procession monks, and spend two intrigue, move the inquisitor back one space. So that could be really good. We can um, we can delay him turning up to the abbey and then try and just build ourselves a bit more time to get all the tokens and, and uh, do the challenges. Okay, so um, first of all, the Franciscan, uh, you'll see... Uh, the cost of legend cards is reduced by one. And at the start of your turn, if at least one other unit is in the Franciscan's uh, area, gain one intrigue. So as all three of us are in this area already, I can also get one intrigue. So we're now on two intrigue. Now all the rooms do different stuff, okay? Uh, and that's the hardest thing about this scenario is kind of just what, what do they all do? What, what do I do? How do I do it? Uh, but you're going to find out how that works. So first of all, how many activation orders? We get three. Now we do the war council, as per the normal game. So remove a wound or gain a charge. Change an activation order into something different. Or just gain an activation order. Um, now, Philip de Vitry, he will gain wounds from his, um, from his poison effect. This is going to be really, really key. This um, because the the fountain, which is at the top, uh, that actually heals wounds, but you can't do it on Vitry. I'm just, I just always, I just play uh, in the War Council. You can actually heal his wounds. Um, or do we get reactivation or an interrupt? Interrupt can be quite good. Uh, an interrupt, you can move uh, Philip to different areas and then cause him to uh, to push uh, all the monks. To different areas uh, effectively but i think i'm just going to grab just grab another order uh, give me some more things to do so i've got four orders this round uh the other thing in this game uh the transition has the re-roll ability so again as per normal royals that can be used once in the game however both novices whenever they get activated you roll a white dice on a blank you recover your re-roll token so every time it's activated so there's a good good chance that you're going to get your active, your reroll token back quite a few times. So you want to be using that anyway. Right. The beauty is uh, no monks in this area. So this talks about how we pick up stuff. Okay. So um, I'm going to go to my close camera for this uh, to talk about how we do this. So you first look to see if there's any monks in the same area. If there isn't, you literally just reveal the token. But you have to talk about which character you are revealing it with, okay? As long as you identify which character you're using for that for that particular activation, that's fine. So I'm going to activate this area just like in the normal game. I'm going to go with my Francician, uh, which is going to look, just because he's got a few more hit points. And he picks up this token here. This is an, a free reroll, but this type of token goes to the character who whose action it was to reveal the token. That's really quite important. There are some tokens which are just like common pool, but some are actually just uh, attached to the actual character themselves, okay? Like the uh, wine and stuff like that. Uh, but basically the uh, crowbar, the medicinal, medicinal herbs, and the, um, what are they called? The uh, map 
tokens. So there's three map tokens on here. Uh, we have to find all three before we can start the crypt challenge, okay? And you can just keep the crypt challenge going uh, uh, um, as long as you go to the right location. Um, so just to show you, uh, to find the cure, you need to go to the laboratory. Just cheat it there slightly. And then to find the crypt, uh, it depends on the card. So at this round, it's in the cloisters. Okay, uh, right now we can do our actions. By the way, picking up is a completely free action. So I'm going to take my transition as it is his uh, activation. Uh, he's going to go over to this area here. So he's going to go to here. And because this area has no monks, again, we just reveal. And we found one of those map tokens. So this is just common pool. So I'm just going to place it down here. So we know we've got one of the three. Awesome. Uh, so, sorry, that's not a map token. That is not a map token at all. That is a parchment. If I ever have four uh, legendary points or four XP, I can spend those to look at one of those uh, one of the one of the tiles on the crypt board. So that's really important. Trying to look at those crypt things really important. It is a memory game. It will be rotated as the game goes on, um, but it's really important to be able to do that. And by the way, I completely completely forgot about that. I had to do it a hundred. 80 degrees clockwise so 90 180 i know we haven't looked at any of them yet so i don't even know so it do, that doesn't actually matter too much but i better just do it for all intents and purposes and that was from the event right um okay so i've still got these two to activate just like in the normal game you activate every single unit that you are controlling in that, that area so i'm going to split them up uh Novice one is going to come down to the uh, to the to the um, the beehive. It should be very clear. Don't I? Just being pinnacle here. Now, if I wanted to pick this up, if I wanted to pick this up, it just follows the same rules as pick up, um, which is really nice. Um, so we don't have to really worry too much about that. But if we look at the beehive, um, it's slightly different to the normal tokens. Uh, you roll four black dice, and if as long as you get three of them as shields, you pick it up. Any other result, you suffer the effects of failure. Now, the beauty is the failure won't matter in this case because failure matters if you've got anyone in the same area or adjacent. There is no one adjacent. So that's, as it's a free action, it's pointless not having a go. It's absolutely pointless not having a go. Um, so I'm going to reveal the token. No, I'm not. I'm going to pick up the honey first. So it's four black dice. We're looking for three shields. Did I say four? Five. Yep, four black tiles. I'm looking for three shields, so not easy, but I do have my reroll token. Oh, wow, what a roll. Three shields straight away. Superb. Uh, so we pick up the honey, goes to novice one, because obviously uh, you're moving uh, monks from an adjacent area, and it has to be him who uses it. It's free action as well, which is, which is awesome. Okay, we now look at this token. And we have one of the medis medical herbs. So again, we can put this one here. Uh, by the way, uh, that should be on the transition because he's the one uh, that looks at um, that looks at one of the tiles. We just place it on him anyway. Um, so here's the herbs. Cool. And my last guy, he's gonna go. He's gonna go up to to, to this area here and see what this is. Right, that is one of the map tokens. Oops, so that is a general supply and we found one of the three map to tokens and one of the three medical herbs. So we're a third of the way of, of, of trying to start our challenges. Cool, that was one, uh, one activation. But now I split them all up, uh, we're gonna have to do different things. So first of all, I'm gonna get the transition and he's gonna come in to here, okay. So we're going into the capitular hall and it says once per turn and, and these it says a character is in an area at the end of the turn they can benefit from the special effects. I don't read it like that. It, some of the, some of these doesn't make sense for that. Um, but certainly this one, uh, we've now finished our, our movement action, if you like, our activation. So once per turn, if no monk is located in it, a current present in the capitular hall can roll a yellow dice. So let's do that. We're looking for, we're looking for a blank. Basically, we can move the, uh, right, we didn't get the blank. Now, that can give us one XP, or I can spend the reroll token to try and get a blank to move the Inquisitor back one. I'm gonna do that. 
So I'm going to spend um, my reroll token, because remember there's loads of ways of getting this back, to try and get blank. I don't get a blank. Um, so I get one XP. So I've got one XP, one legend, and two uh, entry at the moment. Um, and that's what happens at the Capitula Hall. We then have a little look, see what we've got. Right, this token that looks like a monk. If you have a look, two monk tokens. If it's picked up, the closest monk moves into the area, starting with the elder monk. It's not an adjacent. So we've got procession or we've got normal monk. Okay, so one from here or one from here. That even was adjacent. So we're going to go for a procession monk and it comes into our area. We also have to rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. Again, it's not going to matter for us, but you can see how this starts to rotate a fair amount. So you've got to try and remember different, to different tokens, especially if they, um, it, for the end of the game. Okay, so that's what that token does and we discard that for the rest of the game. Right, okay. Uh, we've got two more actions left. I'm probably going to go, I really want this, so I'm just going to keep moving this guy, uh, novice number one over here. I'm not going to pick this up because he's already got the honey and I'm not really fast. Okay, we've got, our, we've got another parchment paper, which again, four XP, four legend tokens, you can look at one of those. So I've got two of them that can do this in a turn. Okay. And, sorry, I should have said, when it is activated, roll a white dice. Let's see if we get that re-roll token back. We're looking for a blank. Nope. So no re-roll token from him. Um, and then my last action will be, now I can go over to here, uh, but the problem is, I'm, I'm actually going to go over to here, which activates a novice. So let's roll the dice, see if we get a blank. We do. So a blank gets us the re-roll token back. So we've now got the re-roll token back. We then move him, he's going to go back here to this one over there to look at this one. And he now has, uh, that was novice two, he now has a free reroll. So my Francisian and my novice two have both got a one-off reroll. You discard this token as soon as you've used it. Okay, cool. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, the parchment, by the way, Uh, they, they can basically read it throughout the game. You don't discard the token, so that's all good. Um, I've run out of activations. So that, I believe, is my turn. I mean, I could have... Yeah. I could have used my um, my transition to move down to this one, perhaps, because he would have gained... Uh, oh, no, it doesn't. It's just at the start of turn, so that's fine. Right, cool. Um, so now we take away all our orders from the board, like in a normal game, to clear up, clean up. Don't have to worry about anything in the um, infirmary in this case. Uh, and then we move on to the next round. So I'm going to move, move this card. And we know what's coming up. I can't remember what I said I was going to do. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, first of all, we move the track one more. No wounds to the uh, to Philip. Uh, we move one monk to K. So we've one monk to K, which was the um, the scripturonian. So uh, let's move him over there. We uh, move one to the library. So I'm gonna I'm gonna clear this bottom area as best I can, and then we can. Oh, for, right. Before all of this happens, I wanted to talk about a couple of rooms. I almost completely forgot. Number one is the cloister, uh, and the cloister is is this this area here, and it says. Cloister. If a monk is located in the cloister at the end of a round, gain one intrigue. If two or more monks are located in the cloister, gain two intrigue. So we're actually going to get two intrigue from the cloister. And then the other place is the prayer room. And it has a very similar thing, except for you gain legend points. So two legend points. As you can see, that's pretty massive. We're now suddenly on four intrigue, three legend and one XP. And uh, it's really important to remember those two rooms. The other one was the library, um, which is really good for um, for gaining points onto your challenge track. Uh, but you have to have make sure no um, no um, 
monks are in that room and you have to be in there. Uh, so it's not gonna happen straight away. Okay, so I nearly forgot about that. Uh, so let's go back to this card. Uh, so we've done the library, we've done the, um, and we've done the Scripturonium. Uh, we now move to an outdoor area F, which is the beehive. Perfect, a normal guy. Uh, so I'm gonna take away from the cemetery, and take, take that normal guy. Then a library monk moves to H, which is the cellar, which is down here. Uh, so let's move, uh, let's move that guy down to there. And then a procession monk moves to D, which is the orchard, which is where we started. So I'm going to move this procession monk out of the um, out of the uh, capitular hall, so that I can basically use my Francisian straight away and try and move this cube back one. He's got one free reroll. I've got my reroll token. Odds on, I might be able to do that. Lose two challenge points. I'm going to start with challenge points and rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. So in this in this particular uh, scenario, you'll be moving it, you're rotating it clockwise and anti-clockwise, uh, which is pretty crazy. Okay. Uh, oops. Sorry, bear with me two seconds. Cool. Okay. So, uh, the mission, go to the cemetery, which I probably will do. Uh, I just have to go there and I get one XP. Um, the crypt is in the quarry. Uh, but I'm going to be going to the quarry pretty much straight away. Now the problem is, uh, there's a good chance that uh, things go wrong uh, because they've got procession monks all next to the quarry. Um, but anyway, so uh, how many orders are we getting this round? We're getting three. So we're going to have some decent activations in the subsequent rounds, that which is good. Let's see what my next three are. Reactivation, always nice. Oh, three legend cards, discard one, or legend points for stuff. Oh, that's a tough one. It's either the cards or the reactivation. I think I'm going to go for the cards because a lot of the... Remember, the transition means that you reduce your, the, uh, the cost of uh, these cards by one. Um, and they aren't legend. They are normal tactics. So we've got start a turn, gain an extra order. Massively strong. Allied, don't really care. I'll start a rally one of your units. Um... They're both a bit rubbish. I'll get rid of this one. So I've got um, Strategist, which is which is awesome. Just gain any order you want, uh, which is really cool. Um, I don't want to be spending my Legend Points because, again, I can use those to look at the um, at these Crypt tokens, which is really, really important. All right. Um, cool. Uh, so I've done that. So, that's, so it's over to me with three activations. So... First activation is definitely going to be here. I'm going to roll that yellow dice. I'm going to get a blank this time. No. Spend his one-off re-roll. No. Spend my re-roll token. Uh, no. So just an XP. Um, obviously not meant to be in that case. Uh, never mind. Uh, then I'm going to move to... Hmm, interesting. You know what? I'm going to move this guy into this area here. And now I'll show you when you're trying to pick up a token, what you do if there are monks already there. So if you're trying to pick up a token, you roll a black dice. We're looking for a shield. Um, stupidly, I've spent all of my... Um, my, um, what am I trying to say? I spent all of my reroll tokens, so we're just gonna hope for it. We get shield. If you get shield, uh, you're fine, you pick it up. All right, we've got the second medical herbs. Superb. That's really, really important. Uh, no failure, so we remain hidden in our plight. Right, uh, let's go down here. First of all, white dice to try and get my uh, reroll token. He gets the blank. Superb. Let's get our reroll taken back. Next thing, we're gonna to move to here. Now I really want that blackjack, so, uh, no, it's not blackjack, crowbar, my fault. So to get the crowbar, we look at the um, quarry, and we're gonna roll, um, oh, a character that moves into the quarry gains one entry. Yeah, another entry. 
You can attempt to pick up. It's the same as before. Four black dice, three shields. If not, uh, one of the procession monks is going to come in for a failure. Two shields. Uh, this is novice one who doesn't have a reroll, so we're going to have to use our reroll token and pray we get it. Oh yeah, four shields. That'll do it. Um, so we pick up this, which is a group item, and that reduces the uh, both challenges by two. So the target. So here, 15 and 13. They're now 13 and 11. That's good. That's good. Uh, now we will see what the token is. Right. This is a trap. You take a wound, an unblockable wound. And because the novices only have one wound, um, that novice one is dead. Okay. So I cannot activate him again this round, which is a shame. So I wanted to get to the cemetery to, to uh, finish this objective although i can still do it i i'll tell you what i didn't do i didn't get the francisians um <laughs> intrigue token from um doing that now uh, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna quickly don't worry, i just removed that i'm just gonna quickly have a look at um there is one the wash house if i can get to here it's it's action is to change all of these intrigue tokens into L into uh, legendary tokens, which is really really important. You 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 automatically gain one and then you can change them. So I can actually change, I would probably change all of them into legendary points. So I can start looking at those tiles. Um, And basically, it's just use it at any time. So uh, yeah, I think rather than rather than going to the cemetery, gaining one XP and another token, I think I'm going to go to the washroom and then just just do all the the shenanigans with it. So first of all, we go here and we move into the washroom. Now it says, if I move into the uh, the washroom, sorry, finishing an activation in the wash house, we do it. So we're going to have to look at this token first. Whoops, didn't mean to look. Because there's a monk in there. I've got to roll this dice. I need, oh, I need a shield. We do not gain a shield. So we now get, um, if we have a little look, we go back to, to this, we failed. Basically, we've done a failure. I've got no way of re-rolling, so we've just got a failure. Um, we've got a monk in. All it does is a push result on that character. And to be completely honest, um, I, I, I've house rolled this, that if you suffer a push, you get pushed to an area where most monks are, okay? So it's three and three, um, I get pushed to there. The only reason I say that is because I play it like the golden rule, I do it to the most disadvantage to me. But obviously if I get pushed to here, I can then do another action. I could do, just do another um, attempt to try and look at that token and then get pushed again and so forth. Um, so uh, we're doing it that way. It's only because he was rather rubbish in terms of um, um, in terms of uh, doing anything. Actually, I'm going to change that. Um, I would say because it does say failure. Uh, while the monk is present in the same or an adjacent area, the monk moves into the player's area and applies the following. So you. I would say you always go to the one that is the uh, the strongest monk that's available adjacent. So it's elder monk, then processional monk. So processional monk comes in. I have to roll a red dice and suffer it without def rolling defense. <laughs> well, okay, it's a push result. So in this case, uh, we just get pushed into here, uh, as I mentioned before. Um, but obviously that can do a kill, uh, that one can do a wound. I mean, we have got the transition, so he, to be technically true, but we don't get to uh, do all of our um, all of our stuff, which is a real bummer. I really wanted to be able to do that. Because we didn't end our activation in there. Okay, uh, that is all my activations. So let's grab these three back. We um, we do the two rooms because it's the end of the round. So prayer room has two monks. 
two LP. I'm going to say it has to be in your turn that you that you can use your uh, your script, but not before. Uh, and then I get uh, because there's still two in the cloister. I get two intrigue as well. Loads and loads of intrigue. I'm definitely going over there. and I'm going to get that sorted um, next turn. Okay, so that's the. Um, I'm just going to leave those dice there because I'm probably going to be using black dice quite a lot. That's quite a lot. Okay, so let's see what we're going to get next. So this card goes away, and we move on to the next one. All right, hard tasks for this one. So first of all, we've got uh, a black dice on the um, on the Inquisitor. So if we look back at this, it says we roll a black dice. We get a shield, nothing happens. Superb. Uh, disrupt, it moves one space. A kill moves two spaces. That's massive, but we do gain one wound onto Philippe. So Philippe has taken one, he's got four. He's got basically a health of four. So as soon as he takes his fourth wound, we lose the game, uh, which would not be good. Then we move monks to I, which is the lab. Uh, we'll move uh, this guy. We'll try, try and clear that, that uh, washroom if we can. Uh, the washroom is an area is is outdoor b yeah i think we'd be okay looking ahead we also need to move it to o which is the capitular hall uh so let's take your guy over there oh i completely forgot about this guy he needs to come back at the, uh, the start of this round um oh 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 let's move let's move this guy to the capitular hall um, there's printing error, by the way, on the, on the sense of uh, the letters. So this should be O, not N, and the prayer room should be no N. The cloister, the cloister says O, oh, that should be N. So they've, they've just been printed with the wrong letters. Um, then we need a library mark to move to M. So let's move him to here. Then we move a uh, procession monk to H, which is the cellar. And then we move the elder monk, which I put over here, down to C, which was the cemetery. So that's all the movements. The washroom is free. I think that's the most important. Spend two intrigue to ch the event to choose an area and move all monks in that area to adjacent areas of your choice. I like the sound of that. Any area at all. I'm going to move them all from the library. Or I just literally move him down one. I like, I like the layout, to be honest, of where everyone is. I'm quite happy with that. Um, Do I go to the library? I think that's quite important because I just I just gained a legend a uh, legend a challenge point of my choice, uh, so I can go there and then I can go there. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna spend my two intrigue. I'm gonna move four of these. Uh, I'm gonna move uh, those two there and him over there. Actually, not not quite that extreme, like that. Yeah, I, no, I'm, I'm actually going to keep as many on the cloister as I can because remember, they um, they give me bonuses anyway. Cool. So we've done that. Mission is to go to the lab um, to gain an XP and the dormitory is the crypt location. But the, the challenge is so high, I'm not really, obviously not fussed about that at all. Okay, how many orders? Hopefully a bit more. No, it's three. Okay, we're going to have loads in the later round uh, because three is the minimum. Then there's a fours and there's one five as well um, in the rounds. And then basically when you run out of uh, round turns, you know where it gives you activations, uh, you just have three activations every turn out thereafter. Right, cool. So, da, 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 start the turn. Uh, I don't really want to use my, I think, mm. Yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to spend one legend point 
because uh, the transition reduces the cost by one to gain any order of my choice. And I'm gonna get a um, interrupt. And there's a reason for that, uh, linked to this over here. Uh, just in case I wanna use it. Uh, Philip de Vitry, I can move him basically. It says here, mm -hmm. Philip de Vitry can be moved into any area to negate the effects of any monk's presence at the cost of an interrupt order. So if you basically use an interrupt order on Philip de Vitry, he can move and then nothing matters. So I'm just thinking down here, I could just send um, my novice one into there and then uh, sort that out. Right, uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is at the start of the turn, if at least one other unit in thing gain an intrigue, so let's do that, then uh, we're gonna activate in here. I'm gonna spend four legend tokens, because I've got four exactly, to look at one of those tiles. And I'm gonna choose this bottom left hand side. This is a skull, this is not good. So I know it's not in this corner. I'm gonna go for corners, and then I'm gonna go in from corners. That's my that's my thinking at the moment. It may not be the best plan. Uh, then his action is gonna to be to move into the washroom. Let's see what token is. It's another scroll, which is fine. There's four of them to collect anyway. Uh, then we're gonna do the we're gonna end our activation in the washroom. So it triggers what the washroom set wash house wash house not washroom. Uh, you gain one LP. And then you can transform any number of intrigue to LP or LP into intrigue. So I'm gonna get all of my intrigue, which is seven, and change them all to LP, legendary points. Then I'm just gonna take three, because I'm gonna spend four to look at the next corner. It's another skull. So I can see if you you guys watching, if you can uh, figure out. Then I've still got another four LP legendary points to look at the next corner. This was the uh, this is the one I was talking about. This is not a parchment. This is a skull, uh, just because of the one player game. So three corners here, here, and here are all skulls. So no parchment found yet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that was his activation. So now we're gonna activate uh, this guy here just to see if I can pick up that reroll token. I do not. Uh, let's, oh, I thought I was gonna move him. Sorry, I should have done. I should have moved uh, Philip de Vitry to here, which means it cancels the effects of this area. Okay, it doesn't push them out of the way. Uh, because then I can go into here and I can just ignore him. And now he's got a re-roll token, which is cool. A hand does exactly the same, remember, as the honey. Uh, I'd have to roll four of these, get three shields, or suffer a failure um, to pick up. And then I can use that with one legend or one intrigue to move an adjacent person. And I've just realized he's got honey anyway, uh, so I could have perhaps used that instead. Never mind. Yeah, that was dumb. No, it's fine, it's fine. I'm, ha I'm not happy with that. Um, right, I've got one more action left. So it makes sense. To let, let's just keep going with these. Um... Oh, I wanted to go to the library, didn't I? Yes, I did want to go to the library. Let's do that. We're going to the library. Right, we've got a trap, take a wound. Fortunately, the Francisian has got two wounds. So he's still alive, thank you. God. Um, once per turn, if no monk is located in the library, a character can draw three legend cards and keep one. Or gain one challenge point for the next challenge they face. I'm going to go for the healing herb, so the blue one, and I'm just going to put on an extra challenge. I've got the crowbar, so now I've suddenly taken, taken off three points from that challenge. I think that's more, that's more worth, it's, it's actually more worth it than getting legendary cards with no legendary tokens. Okay, uh, that's all my actions done. So we take away the uh, activation cubes. We uh, get our two rooms worth, because that's the end of the round. Um, so we've got our uh, here and here. Yes, this has got at least two. Yes, this has got at least two. So that's two legendary points. And then two intrigue points, tokens. Right, okay, let's see what's next. So 
So we've got, we got 13 on Cure, that's awesome. If I can find that last um, last um, med medical herb, that'd be brilliant. We move this on one, and Philippe gets his second wound. Not good. We move one monk to the orchard. Um, hmm, I th I'm gonna move this one into the orchard. I think the clo yeah, the cloister, the capitular horse might still be worth it just to move this guy back. I'm a bit worried about the fact that he is speeding his way towards us. A library mark monk to the lab. Um, let's move this one to the lab. That's not good. I don't want the lab with anyone in it. And then we've got uh, the cemetery being taken by a procession monk. Um, so let's go for... Mm, that's a bit annoying. Let's go for that one. Uh, yeah. No, no, you know what? Yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, we put him in the cemetery. And then one's going to go over to the quarry. Uh, and, and that's another procession monk. So uh, I want to keep those two in there. So I'm just going to put him to the quarry. And then finally, the elder moves to A, which is the dorm. So that's good. That means there's only, well, there's still a monk there. Um, yeah, don't know. We have to think. We can spend one. Um, our event is spend one intrigue to move two monks of your choice from anywhere on the board to the dorm. Oh yes, please for one intrigue. Oh hell yeah! You are going to the dorm, and you are going to the dorm. So that frees up uh, what I needed to do basically, which is awesome. The mission is to go to the capitular hall and roll a black dice. On a black, on a uh, shield, 50-50, you may look at one of the tokens. <gasps> That's massive. The prayer room is where the crypt is this turn. Oof. Okay. Four activations this turn. Let's see what we've got. <laughs> awesome. An interrupt. Uh, an activation for XP. Oof. Oof. An activation... For XP or legend points. Remember, legend points are how we look at that. But we do need to get, we do need to find uh, the other two map parchments, so we're not going to get the crypt open at all. And we do need to find the last medical herb, so we can get sorted with that. What what I'm hoping for is I'm going to move um, one of the guys to here, and then it's going to be a medical herb, and I can literally start that challenge straight off the bat and get that going because that needs to get going. Uh, that's essential. Or else uh, Philippe's going to die. A premature death. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to lose an activation. In other words, like two net two activations just to get more XP or legend. I mean, there is the other one as well. I can change those two to legend tokens, which is quite strong. Now, I'm going to grab the interrupt as standard. Right, okay. So, at uh, the start of the turn, if the Francician's in a room, which he is with other... Oh, no, he's not there anymore. So he's not in a room with other people, so he does not get uh, his intrigue point. Um, okay. So what's the plan here? Well, first of all, I'm going to use the libraries. Um, no, no, it says end of their turn. It doesn't make any sense, you see. I, I, I hate this, this, this thing here. If the characters are located in a particular area at the end of their turn, they can benefit from special effects. So you can only gain one of those. I don't think that's true. That doesn't make. Uh, that, that sounds too rubbish. It sounds too weak. As, a, as an ability. So I'm going to keep going with what I, what I know. It says, the library, once per turn, if no monk, monk is, lo is located in that library, the character can draw three legend tokens. I'm going to gain another, oh, that shouldn't be on there. I'm going to gain another success onto my uh, healing one instead. Right, let's, I uh, haven't got my reroll token, so I'm actually going to use uh, this guy. Do I use that guy to go? 
I kind of need to do this as well. Uh, okay, we are still going to do it. We're going to see if we can get that reroll token back. Nope. Uh, then I'm going to move him to here. Yes. Right, we've got a second map parchment. That's good. And we're in the lab. We've got someone in the lab. That was the important part. Uh, then we're going to move... I need to get to Cloister, so one, two, three. I need three cubes to get to the Cloister. Or I do it all with my Francium. He's only got one wound left. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, if, I, if I commit to that, there's a good chance that he may take another wound from another trap. And then uh, I think it's one more trap. Yep, there's one more trap. And there's uh, one more monk movement as well um, to, to suffer failures from. Uh, but I do need to start going through these tokens as well. Oh, it's, it's tough. It's tough, tough, tough. Uh, let, let's risk it. Transition's moving to here. Okay, that might have been the best move. Uh, I, I've picked up the medical herbs. I think we're going to have to ignore the capitular hall because we can now, with this player for novice one, we can now do our start our challenge. So to do a challenge, uh, you use these challenge cards, which are these, and it's push your luck. Some will have successes, but there are some automatic failures, okay? Um, so we've got to decide what we want to do. Uh, so I'm just going to see... D disturbance car, that's, that's what it's called. Oh, and then we need... I nearly forgot about that as well. I'm going to try and get this without breaking everything. Uh, uh, so you've got an hourglass, a timer, effectively. Stuck. Um, so, uh, okay, so we've got a timer ready for it. <coughs> Excuse me. So it costs an action to do the challenge. So let's, just so I can show you the uh, the mechanics. So I'm gonna do that. So I need to put this rule book down because I'm now about to do the challenge. So I'm taking it from here and I've got to make decisions before the timer runs out. If the time runs out and you've, and you've not said I've stopped, you've got to finish. The cure is 13, minus two is 11, minus two is only nine. So let's get going. So brilliant, excellent. Uh, this is the luck of the draw sometimes. Uh, we've got straight away the disturbance. Now the annoying thing about this um, about this is, uh, I believe you have to shuffle it all up. Yeah, shuffled at the beginning of every challenge attempt, which is really annoying. So it is tough. Uh, so this procession monk, which is the strongest one, I believe. Let's have a little look. Uh, Yep, procession monk before the, uh, so this one here. So he's gonna come in and we're gonna be doing a red dice to see what happens. Uh, we take a kill result. So we are effectively, you, you can never die in this game, but you, you can certainly take wounds uh, and you get taken back. Ah, really annoying. Oh well, uh, that's that done. Uh, so I'm not gonna be doing uh, that anymore. I still need to find the last map title just to make sure I get the crypt going. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to get to get an X on the first one. What was the next one? Ah, oh, see, never mind. Uh, we we'll have to shuffle those up at the start of any challenge. Right, we have two more cubes. However, I think we're just going to go with this guy, uh, and we're going to go down right to the middle here. I'm going to try and attempt to pick this up. 
with one black dice. We get the shield. That's what we needed. Awesome. And we got the monks. So uh, the strongest monk, which is the elder monk, will come in. Uh, I have to discard one order of my choice from the common pool or locks them in the dungeon. The character is then redeployed on its round at the beginning of its next turn. Um... I have to discard the order. If, if I've got an order, I have to discard it. So bye bye, interrupt. I, but to be fair, at least it's got rid of that negative um, negative token. So we've got uh, three more tokens left on the board. One of them will be a map. Um, so we, we will get that. One of them will be a trap. And one of them will be a reroll, I think. Maybe not a reroll, actually. What's missing? One's a trap, one's a parchment, and one's a. The uh, the thing we need. Okay, uh, that's my that's my turn done. So let's draw those back. We, <laughs> I'm quite annoyed we didn't get to here. That that was quite a massive uh, point. Um, we just didn't, you know, things just didn't go uh, in in the way we wanted. And I want I really wanted to get that started. And it's unfortunately uh, I just drew pretty badly. I mean, it is a tough deck. That is a tough deck. There's, in fact. Just to show you, remember I'm shuffling this, so I'm not cheating. Uh, one, two, three, four, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Four out of 14 are X's. So you can kind of see, you, you kind of want to be uh, drawing two cards, max, really, to, 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 to play the odds. Um, not even that. Well, yeah, I suppose so, but but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's tough. It's real tough. All right, um, because if you draw next, by the way, uh, you, it's cumulative. So every card that's passed, is, you you go up. But as soon as you draw next, you lose any progress you've made. So that's the um, push your luck element to it. What was I doing? I was just telling about that. Right, okay, that didn't go brilliantly. Uh, let's see what's next, especially because the cure is only 13. Oh, man, okay, the cure's going down to 12. But he's coming ever so closely. Three more, and he's here. We take another wound to Philippe. We need to heal him or we lose the game. Two monks are going to be moving. The first one is going to be moving to the lab, unfortunately. How annoying. Uh, I'm gonna move uh, one of these to the lab. The next one's gonna be going to the cemetery. Uh, let's just start to, um, unfortunately we need to go to the cemetery as well. A librarian monk is also going to the lab. This sucks. Uh, yeah, let's just move that one. And then two procession monks are going to be moving to the library and to the prayer room. So the prayer room and the library. And then the elder monk moves to the capitular hall. Event. Lose challenge point. Oh, no. Lose, lose two challenge points. Kablonk. That is... Awful. A 90 degrees counterclockwise. So we're going to move it like that. This is the corner I need to look at. The other three corners are skulls. Mission. Go to the lab. Roll a yellow. If you roll a blank, negate the poison damage suffered this round. We can take away that wound. <sighs> Buys us another... Because if this next card has got a wound and I've not found the cure, well, I've lost the game. So he comes back to the spawn point, which is in the orchard. The cemetery is where the crypt is. The cure is only 12. I want to be doing the cure. I just need to get someone in there to do the cure. Simple as that. Right. Start of round. Let's, let's get going. Uh, four activations, which isn't too bad. Gives me something to play with. Come on. Heal a wound. Uh, move rally point, which is not bad. I can move a rally point. No, well, not really. Uh, burn an activation. Absolutely pointless in this particular scenario. 
two legend points for an activation. I'm just going to grab the green cube and just use it as a movement. As an activation. Okay, right. Uh, start of turn. He is in with another unit, so I do get an intrigue. <clears throat> right. So player one is still closest to get to here. I needed, annoyingly, I needed an interrupt, and then I could have um, moved him to here and ignored them. As it stands, it's not ideal. Uh, to be fair, I can try and do, yeah, I can try and uh, find the cure, and it doesn't matter that they're there. It's just if um, if the next comes up, uh, I'm going to get stuff that fail results. So he's over there. I do need to find the last crypt. It's not looking great. I've got to be honest, it's really not looking great. Let, let, uh, let's just try and get that reroll token back first. Need a blank. Nope. Um, so he needs to hear. Then uh, we'll do it again. Uh, nope. Right. And then we'll do one in here. Obviously, you can't activate the same area more than once, so I'm only going to be doing this once. So the chances of getting uh, 10 is extremely slim, but let's try and get something. There we go. More than one. Uh, what do I do? What do I do? He's just going for it. Oh, that was a bad choice. Okay, so he suffers it from the light. Librarian. No, no, he comes in and uh, we roll a red dice and we are pushed. So uh, our monk is pushed to here. Okay, so he didn't die. I suppose that's something. Ah, uh... right. Let's send him over here. Let's try and find this last token. Uh, that's the trap. He dies because he already had a wound. So let's take that wound off, ready to spawn him in the next round. For one more action. Yeah, let's do it. We'll go over here and we'll try and do this. Or not. Uh, that is novice one. Let's spend his reroll token. Ooh, no, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. I'll use my honey. I use my honey to move him over to here. And therefore, we have he's now got uh, a second parchment. That's not what I needed. What can we do in the cemetery? Let's have a little look before we move on. Oh, man. I haven't been reading that. When a monk moves into the cemetery, the crypt turns 90 degrees clockwise. Okay. Uh, so... If I'm in the cemetery, I roll four black dice. If I get three shields, I can move any unit somewhere else, which I do. So any unit somewhere else. Let's move this unit up to there. Let's try and get the lab free. Okay, uh, I'm out of actions. Uh, that was not good because I think I might lose the game now, uh, which shows how tough this is. By the way, this is not easy, this this uh, scenario. Uh, just remember, this is the one I'm thinking about that I need to check still, um, whenever that is. Two uh, yes and yes, so two intrigue, two legend. I think it might be worth, um, well, he's gone now, hasn't he? Oh, well, uh, it might be worth sending him up to here at some point. Okay. Cool. Um, that's the end of the round. Uh, I'm just going to spawn him back into here. Right, let's see if we die. <gasps> duh, duh. Yes, we do. Uh, so the uh, Inquisitor doesn't move, but Philip de Vitry gets his fourth and he succumbs to a poison and we lose the game. And you can suddenly see how tough this game is. Um, I mean, I just felt like two, two, two points on that wasn't enough I, I needed to just try and try and, well that would have been perfect if i got four then i'm looking pretty good with six um possibly taking it down again but it's still going to take a few rounds to, to be able to do that uh and it does depend on these for for the, the way i play it but it's really hard it is a uh, really tough um 
I would say that mechanic of Philippe getting uh, injured is the hardest part of this this scenario, this game. Uh, trying to keep him alive is really tough, really tough. Anyway, well, that's how you play it. Well, my interpretation of how you play it anyway. Should we see, well, there's only one token left. So the map, the missing map to find the crypt was here uh, in there. And that would have given me the three to get things done. So I was happy with what I collected. It, I mean, that was, that was mean. I mean, the first time I did it, an X, I, I really could have done with getting some. Then uh, this came up, which lost me two challenge points, uh, which means that I lost the progress I made already because um, I could have easily been on seven or eight at that point. Um, and then and then the next time I could have found the cure. He's fine. I can ignore him and then I can just really concentrate on trying to get um, get things done. There you go. Oh, oh, uh, I'm not going to do it, but I completely forgot. Go to the lab. Right, if I get a blank with a reroll on the yellow dice, then he's still alive. No, it was novice one. No, okay, I didn't get I didn't get a blank anyway, so it doesn't affect it in this case. But this goes to show, just really look at the cards. Just remember the mission, which I did complete. Uh, not that one, sorry. Uh, where is it? Where did I just put it? Oh, here. Uh, this one here, uh, that was happening. I did get to the lab, and I should have done that straight away because I could have taken off another wound, which means he would have been surviving. And then after that next round, let's see if he would have got another wound. No, he wouldn't have. So I would have had at least another two or three rounds uh, to try and complete some of these missions. So, you know, it is it is down to dice rolling. This game is, um, effectively. But I think that this really does tie into it so well. It's, it's really nice for that fact. Um, so I really like it. Uh, it's just really tough. This deck is really, really tough. So much so that I, 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 I consider taking one of the X's out to make it three X's in that deck. And I think, to be honest, I think that's good enough because... It's really, really hard to, to progress the, the, the tracks. Uh, you've got a few twos in there. You've got a zero. You've got one three. That's it. And then some ones. So actually, the chances of progressing it any by any amount half decent is quite hard on, on one activation. And you can't just go willy-nilly. You go, all right, I'm going to activate. I'm going to I'm going to do a challenge. I'm going to do a challenge. I'm going to do a challenge. You have to spend activation cubes. And obviously, once you place the grey activation cube in the lab... You can only use a yellow cube to be able to do a challenge again in turn. So I just feel that's too hard. Uh, it's too hard for this particular scenario. So I would like to see that one drop to just take an X, an X out of there. Um, I think that's that, that's that's quite necessary to make it manageable. Um, I have I have done I've, I've played this like six times. Uh, this was my seventh, and I've I've beaten it once playing proper rules with all the X's in. Um, but it was just it was just a lot of lucky rolls, to be completely honest. Um, it, it depends how quickly you find these three medical herbs. That's definitely that's definitely the route to take, by the way, of the, everything I've played. Uh, because you have to meet both of these objectives and complete both of them to win the game. Just go to heal him first. He, he's the most vulnerable objective that you have in this game, to, certainly to start with. So that's what I would recommend. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't know if this uh, camera angle uh, was any better in terms of um, for viewing. Hopefully it didn't make people uh, seasick as much. Um, the only problem I have with it is you don't see the detail. It's, it's literally like an overview of of everything. And it's, it's harder to see things. Um, and with the lighting I've got, unfortunately, it's, um, it's not brilliant uh, to be able to see things. So I don't know, I'll have a little play around and mess around with some different camera setups and see if I can do something a bit better. All right, thanks very much.